Hello class, welcome to pre-algebra lesson 4 or 5, which is all about solving markup and markdown problems. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve problems involving percent markup and percent markdown. So I just want to give you a couple of vocab words that go with each of these. So percent markup, um, some real world examples, some phrases you might hear is something called tax or like sales tax. Um, that's an example of a markup where you take a price and tax actually gets added on to the price and increases it. So that's like that's a percent markup. Um, another example of a markup would be if you were to leave a tip for a waiter, waitress, um, someone that cuts your hair or any other uh, service that involves tipping as part of that norm culture. And then percent markup also is used by stores or restaurants in order to, that's how businesses make money. So they buy something at a lower cost from like a wholesale where they buy in bulk and then they increase the price and sell it to you. Okay. So that percent markup is what helps keep companies, stores in business, okay? And then percent markdown, that represents discounts, um, is kind of the big one, okay? Um, those are probably the three terms that you're going to be the most familiar with as we are progressing through this lesson. Okay, so with that in mind, let's start with example one, finding a percent markup. So Marty buys plain cell phone cases and then decorates them to resell online at a higher price. What is the percent markup on each phone case? So you can see over here, the plain phone case costs Marty $7.20. And then he's able to sell them for $11.25 each once he has decorated them. So this is going to work a lot like that percent of change problem that we did yesterday, where our part is going to be equal to like what what did it how much did it change by? So if I were to take that new price and subtract the old one, I would have let's see the part would be equal to four dollars and five cents. Okay, so if I were to subtract those two, I get four dollars and five cents. And then I do roughly the same thing. Okay, so as we did yesterday, I'm looking for that percent markup, basically that percent increase. Okay, so I'm gonna say, again, we're gonna use that part equals percent times whole. So my part is $4.05. I don't know my percent, but my whole would be how much it originally cost, so $7.20. And then again, I'm going to divide by 720. And when I do that, I get 0 0.5625 equals P. So if I were to round that to the nearest percent, I would say that's, well, 56.25. That's going to round just to 56%. So the percent markup is going to be a 56% or 56% increase. Okay, so with that in mind, I want you to calculate the percent markup on a phone case that a $300 phone sold for $465. Okay, good luck. Okay, for this problem, hopefully your work looks something like what I have up there on the screen and you ended up with a 55% markup. Okay, if you did not get that, your work does not match and you can't figure out what happened, please be sure to reach out for some help. I'm happy to help you. But let's move on to example two. So this time we are going to find the selling price. Okay, so we have the local furniture store pays $110 for a chest of drawers and sells it with a 40% markup. What is the selling price? of the chest of drawers. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 40% and I'm going to convert it to a decimal. So that would be 0 0.4. And then if I want to figure out what the selling price is, 
I'm still going to use that part equals percent times whole. And right now, I have to figure out what that percent markup is, that part, or not the percent, because I know it's 40%, but I have to figure out what that part is. So instead of writing percent, I'm going to do 0 0.4 times, and then what the furniture store paid. They paid $110. So that tells me if I were to multiply those two numbers together, I would end up with 44. And that represents how much they want to increase the price before they sell it. So what I would do is I would take that original price and I would say plus 44. And that tells me that the furniture store is going to sell it at $154. Okay, so what I did was I took the whole and I added the part, and that equals the selling price. So that right there is how you can solve every single one of these problems. Now, before I move on to the next page, I want to take a minute and I want to teach you a slight shortcut. And if this shortcut works for you, great, feel free to use it. If this shortcut is confusing and you're worried that you're not going to be able to do this consistently with accuracy, don't worry about doing it this way. Do the way that works for you. Okay, so what we can do is we're going to do the part equals the, and then this is where I'm going to say 100 plus the percent times the whole. And what I mean by that is this right here is 100% of the cost, right? This right here is 40% of the cost. And what that told me is that this $154 is 140% of the original cost. So a faster way of solving this is you can say that the part equals and then 100% as a decimal is just one, right? So I have one plus 0 0.4 times 110. Now you might be thinking this is not looking any shorter. Well, that's because I'm showing you and explaining these steps very thoroughly, but once you get the hang of this, this next step, I'm going to do a color change to help you identify. This is actually the work that you would have to write down. Okay, So you would say the part or whatever equals, you would just say 1.4 times whatever that starting cost was. And this is going to actually change from part. That would be the price. Because if you were to type in 1.4 times 110, it's going to bring you directly to the $154. So it saves you a step of doing calculations. So whenever you're doing a markup, so this would mean tax if you're trying to find the final price, or the tip if you're trying to find the price of your final bill. Um, you could do this where you do one point and then whatever the percent was times the cost and that will bring you directly to your final answer. Okay, so if that feels good to you, feel free to use it. If it feels a little bit shaky to you but you want to get better at using it and you want help, ask. I'm happy to help. I'm happy to walk you through more. Okay, but it's just important that you pick what works for you. All right, example three. Now let's practice finding um, a markdown or uh, sales tax. Uh, that seems a little bit weird because I just told you how markup represents sales tax, but um, where this gets a little bit tricky is right now this problem is asking two different things. It's asking for the markdown first, so the discount first, and then sales tax second. Okay, so just so you know, if you ever have a problem where 
um, it's a discount and tax, always do the discount first. If you're worried that you're never going to remember that, sometimes I like to think of things alphabetically because we learned the alphabet at a very young age. And when we're talking about a discount, D comes before S in the alphabet. So discount comes before sales. That's one way that you can remember it. All right, let's try to figure out this problem. We have Edward wants to buy a snowboard that is on sale. If the sales tax in Edward's state is 7.5%, how much will he pay for the snowboard? Now this picture is pretty small, but this is what it says. It says that the cost is $180, but then it's doing this typical thing where they cross out that price, usually in a bright color like red, um, to get your attention, and then they write the percent, and then in big capital letters they say off, because they really, those marketing techniques, they really want to draw you in with the bright colors, capital letters, um, and make you feel like this is a really good deal. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Anyways, so the starting cost is $180. So original is 180 Now, if I'm finding a discount, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the part, because I need to figure out how many dollars off it is, and I'm going to do the percent times whole. So I'm just going to do part equals 0 0.3 times 180, and that tells me that if I were to do that, it would be 54. So that's how much money he can save. So 180 minus 54 tells me that the new cost of the snowboard is $126. So that's how much he can save with that discount. Another way of looking at discounts is you can do the price equals, and then you guys remember how I did for markup, I did 100% plus whatever the original, like the percent was in this one. For markdown or discount, we say minus, and then you do times the whole. So again, this is me writing out extra steps right now. So I would do 100%, which we represent with a 1, minus the 30%, which we represent with a 0.3. And if I were to do that, 1 minus 0.3 is 0 0.7. That means that I'm paying 70% of the original cost. And that right there will give you the price is $126. Okay, so again, once you get used to that, if that's how you want to solve it, you could honestly just get away with these last two steps, especially if your mental math is good. Okay, now, again, pick whichever one works for you. Now let's do the tax. Okay, so for the tax, what I'm going to do is I am going to say the amount of tax is going to be represented by the percent, which is 0 0.075, okay, the 7.5% times the cost, the discounted cost. And that tells me that it is about $9.45. So if I'm looking for the cost of the snowboard, I have to add that to it. So now I'd say the price equals 126 plus 945, which is $135.45. Or, if you want to go a slightly different route, another option that you could do is you could do um, where we practice that percent markup that we did before, where we do the 100 plus 
whatever. So I have my percent markup. So I'm going to label this tax price. So my percent markup is 0.75%, or sorry, it's 7.5%. So my decimal would be 1.075 times 126. And if I were to type that in, I end up at the 135.45. And I have my final answer right there. Okay, so you can see I've shown you a couple of shortcuts. I've shown you um, ways that you can just be really consistent, even though it takes more steps. So pick what works for you. I want you to try this problem on your own, okay? I want you to figure out just the percent markdown for an $80 jacket that is on sale for $48. Okay, so there isn't that second tax step on this one. You're just figuring out basically the discounted price. Good luck. All right, for this problem, hopefully you got 40%. I realized right before you paused the video, uh, I misspoke and I said you're trying to find the discounted price. You already have the discounted price. It was $48. We were solving for the percent itself. So. What I did was I said 32 equals percent times 80, the original cost. And then um, when I did that, I ended up with, <laughs> I don't know where I got this 48 from, but when I did that, when I did 32 divided by 80, um, I ended up with 0 0.4, okay, and that is the same as 40%. If you have questions about that, please be sure to reach out for some help. I'm happy to help you. Otherwise, here is a little summary of what we have covered in today's lesson. If you have questions about this or anything else, please be sure to reach out for some help. I'm happy to help you. Have a great day.